The thing had my grandmother's face. So this is a little paranormal story that I had back when I was 12 years old during the summer of 7th grade year. My family and I decided to take a trip up to Alabama to visit my grandfather's estate. He had just recently passed away from a massive heart attack. So, unsurprisingly, my family was very distraught. My mother was will executor, so she was in charge of the estate and taking inventory of all of my grandfather's belongings. As we pull up to the house, I get an eerie feeling. To give a little perspective on the setting, I'll describe the house. The house is located in a really bad neighborhood, filled with druggies and weirdos. A couple years after the visit, the house was broken into and the copper from the writings in the house would be stolen. So that gives kind of an idea of the scumbags my grandfather had living around him. The house itself kind of looked like the house from the Amityville horror movie. It was two stories with a basement and a creepy cat. A very creepy cat. It had three bedrooms and two baths on the top floor and one bedroom and one bath in the basement. It had wood floors and the ceiling was unpainted. The only place in the house where the ceilings were somewhat painted was in my grandparents' bedroom. There was a big X pattern in a sequence of patterns across the ceiling. This bedroom was particularly big and had a bathroom in it. It's also the room my grandfather died in. My grandfather was six, seven, and 300 pounds. So I had guessed at what, it was what had, so I guess that was what had attributed to his heart attack. The house's exterior was made of wood and sat on 10 acres of land. Another 100 acres if you count the land that was leased. The land was littered with old rusty cars that grandfather used to collect parts off of. The inside of the house was rustic and the furniture looked like it was bought from Goodwill. It smelled musty, a smell I can't really associate with too many other things. Just to be clear, I'm not knocking the house. My grandfather built that house with his bare hands, so I had a lot of respect for it. He and my grandmother had spent the first three years building the house living in the basement. The basement smelled even worse than the upstairs. It smelled like old, stifling, dead air. The kind of smell you would smell in an abandoned house in the middle of the woods. It had a kitchen, a living room area, and a bedroom. I like to spend a lot of time down here snooping around through the wide variety of items my grandfather had down there. From old radios to old police monitors. My grandfather had everything down there. On one particular day, my parents were outside taking inventory on the vast collection of mechanic parts, and I was snooping around in the basement. As I was down there, I started to hear a noise above my head. It sounded like footsteps coming from my grandparents' bedroom. I figured it was one of my parents in there trying to get something. I shrugged it off and continued with my snooping. The sounds never stopped though. It sounded like a crescendo, starting out soft and gradually getting louder and louder 
and then starting all over again in a pattern. It sounded as if something was walking back and forth. I decided to go upstairs and investigate the noise, but no one was up there. I was creeped out to say the least. So I joined my parents outside where I stayed for the rest of the day. Later that night, when I was back in the house, I was forced to sleep in my grandparents' bedroom despite my protest. Luckily, I was sharing the room and the bed with my grandmother who happened to join my parents on the trip. My parents would sleep across the hall. Me and my mom got in some sort of argument and I was forced to go to bed early with the, with the really creepy cat. My grandmother was right outside the bedroom in the living room. She was watching TV. Despite the noise coming from the TV outside the bedroom, the bedroom was extremely quiet. It seemed to take on an aura of its own. The bed faces the door going out to the living room, and the bathroom door sat on the right side of the bed. So here I was in this creepy bedroom, laying on my back in bed. As I was laying there, I began thinking about the footsteps I'd heard earlier in the day. I didn't like it in that bedroom. The air was suffocating. All of a sudden, I heard a noise inside the bathroom. I lay there motionless with my head turned towards the bathroom. My eyes locked on that closed door. This bathroom wasn't very big at all. It was the size of a storage closet. I'll never forget the noise that I was hearing from that bathroom. It sounded like a gargling sound, like a choking gargling sound. I really can't explain how scared I was. I just laid there paralyzed with fear. Several seconds went by that felt like hours before the sounds finally stopped. It was silent again. I was still too afraid to move. I wanted to scream out to my grandma, but I couldn't bring myself to do so. I rolled over on my side so that I could permanently keep my eyes on that door. A few minutes went by before I started to notice something again. The door handle was slowly moving from one side to the other, as if someone were trying to open it but couldn't bring themselves to do so. I just stared in complete horror, my mouth hanging wide open. The latch on the door went through the stop and the door began to creep open. It was an inward swinging wood frame door, so it would be opening away from me. As the door began to open, all I could think was that I had to get out of there, but I could never bring myself to do so. The door opened about halfway before it stopped abruptly. It was dark in the room, but the TV from the living room illuminated the room a little bit. I could see a dark shadow moving around the bathroom. I couldn't quite make out the shape of it. It was just dark, sort of like a black hole. All of a sudden, a face popped out of the darkness. I was horrified. It was my other grandmother, my deceased grandmother. Her head and her face were showing, but not her body. It was almost as if she was peeking out at me. I was even more weirded out by how close to the floor the head was. 
It was about an inch underneath the door jamb. Her long mullet-like gray hair hung to the side, and her thick seeing glasses just about covered her whole face. Words can't even begin to describe how terrified I was. I contemplated running out of the room, but the thought of my grandmother reaching out and grabbing my legs and pulling me, me down to my doom quickly pushed that thought out of my head. So I just laid there and stared at her. She stared back at me and slowly began to smile. Oh God, that smile. That smile let me know one thing. That was not my grandmother. I don't know who or what it was, but it wasn't my grandmother. That smile had dry, caked on blood surrounding it. It was pure evil. The head began to move its way up past the door jam until it finally stopped at the top of the door, its eyes never leaving mine. It began to creep its way from the side all the way down to the middle of the doorway. Its dark body creeping along, covering the whole door. I couldn't stand it anymore. I closed my eyes and screamed louder than I ever have in my life over and over and over again. Finally, my dad burst through the door, who was followed by my mother and my living grandmother. A wave of panic filled their faces as they flicked on the light and saw my face. I was pale white and staring off into space. They questioned me what could possibly be wrong, but I said nothing. Eventually, they calmed me down enough where I could finally explain what I saw. They first looked at each other and then back at me. I could tell they were skeptical, but scared at the same time. My dad checked the bathroom, but of course, there was nothing there. My mother finally moved me out of the room into a different bedroom on the other side of the house. I never heard anything else about this incident from my parents. I'm not even sure if they believed me. All I know is that even writing this now, 10 years later, it still scares me. Probably because of one disturbing fact that I learned a couple of years after the incident when the house was finally sold. My grandmother didn't just die. She committed suicide in that very bedroom that I was staying in. A gunshot to the chest. I was very close to her, so I know that she wouldn't do anything to try and scare me. So whatever that was, it wasn't my grandmother, and I hope I never meet it again. After learning of my grandmother's suicide and seeing that demon, I have to wonder if my grandfather saw it too, and that's what really caused his heart attack. <laughs>